Tomorrow, my service as your governor will end. I'll return to private life, handing the reins to a new administration that will take up the responsibility of protecting and advancing the goals we share. On behalf of all Vermonters, Governor-elect Shumlin, I wish you and your team all the very best. Eleven-day walk that began in Brattleboro on January 2nd. More than 175 people participated, ranging from toddlers to people in their 80s. We do not have the backing of a multinational corporation with our request to you, our elected representatives, to act on this historic and unprecedented opportunity to not allow continued operation of Vermont Yankee. With clothing, with shoes, with lunch programs, every th single thing that you can imagine happened to try to destroy the Panthers. And that's why I put up, again, on this wall over here, um, some of the counterintelligence. I put the drawings up mostly because they're visual. But I spent, a, as Sandy knows in her office, I read about 300,000 documents. All of us here have some basic information about uh, referendum and how we got here. Uh, just to educate, educate an average Vermonter about uh, what it is that we are celebrating today. Uh, we all know that Sudan was a British colony. It was ruled by Great Britain and Egypt under what was then called condominium rule. And when Sudan became independent, in 1956, uh, the British government just left. Southern Sudanese today decided to determine their own destiny. Here is the result of the recount. Total number of votes cast, 1,085. Needed to win, 543. Um, Tim Ash, 540. Moreau Weinberger, 540. Spoiled, 5. So as a result of that vote, no candidate having received a majority uh, on, in the recount, we will uh, suspend the caucus and reconvene per our agreement with the campaigns within a month. And we will, at that point, have a, a, a nominee for mayor. So let me just say, first of all, thank you to each and every one of you for your understanding and, and your patience. We'll see you within a month. I want to thank the volunteers who are here still, some of them. Thank you. I want to thank our candidates, Senator Ash, Murrow Weinberger. Uh, at the time, they were, brought, they were forecasting anywhere from four to seven inches of rain. That's a big, that's a big rainstorm for Vermont. Don't get me wrong. But it's uh, not what we ended up with, obviously. Thousands of people uprooted from their homes. Children have been kidnapped, even forced to kill and mutilate members of their own family. It is some of the most horrible things imaginable. I am not running, and I never have run. I'm a candidate. This is a job op opportunity, application. When you vote for a capitalist party or the candidates in a capitalist party, you get what you've got. And they're all the same. And you keep blaming them, the Democrats, the Republicans, the progressives, whatever for taking you where you don't want to go or where you don't want to be, but you keep voting for the same people over and over again. There is something profoundly wrong when in recent years we have seen a proliferation of millionaires and billionaires at the same time as millions of Americans are working longer hours for lower wages and we have shamefully the highest rate 
of childhood poverty of any major country. So, you know, I announced I was going to run. I couldn't stand watching it anymore. We used to have victories. We don't have victories. We're going to have so many victories that you're going to be bored of winning. You're going to get so tired of it. This is fascist anti-gay Donald Trump, stay away! Racist 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 fascist anti-gay Donald Trump, stay away! Have you voted yet? Have you voted yet? Have you voted yet? Just contact your local town clerk. Request a ballot. Complete your ballot. And mail your ballot. That way, when someone asks you, have you voted yet? You can say, yes, I voted. The committee concluded that there simply would be no benefit to selling BT outright because both the community asset and the city funds already invested would be lost. While the committee did not believe that an outright sale of Burlington Telecom would in any way be beneficial to the city. They did feel that a partial sale or partnership um, can provide realistic opportunity to moving BT forward and protecting our community asset. It's a little odd to comment in this form. I, I personally fundamentally believe it should not be sold. That it should maintain, be maintained as a public utility. If we look at the history right here in the city of Burlington Electric Department, in its very early decades was off to a very rocky start financially. Um, and yet the people of Burlington persevered, recognizing the value of owning our own utility. It's gone on to save us a lot of money uh, to be a leader on efficiency and other measures. Hello and welcome. Uh, this is What the Hell Happened on Monday Night with me, your host, City Councilor Max Tracy from Ward 2 coming to you live uh, from the Old North End here at Channel 17 Studios. Uh, it was a crazy meeting, probably the most crazy meeting that I've been through uh, in six years on the City Council. Uh, a meeting that lasted eight and a half hours starting at 5.30 and not concluding until 1.45 a.m. Uh, and dealing really only with one topic and that topic was the pending sale of Burlington Telecom. More than any uh other reason I believe I was elected in 2012 to resolve the Burlington Telecom crisis, which is perhaps the largest financial crisis in the city's more than 150 year history. Today, I share with our entire community the welcome news that the city has made good on our promise to resolve the Burlington Telecom crisis. With the internet, we obviously have to make a commitment like we did uh, in the Depression to uh, get broadband out uh, to rural America so that there's a chance to compete. Um, and one of the most important things that has to be part of it, too, is public access television, which has as its mission informing people in the local community. You know what they say, history is always written by the winners. Well, the corporate crowd a century ago kind of won over the populists and managed to crush and eliminate and bury that whole history of what the relationship was between people and corporations and how what's happening today is not inevitable, it's not irreversible. And ever since I've been coming to the NPAs, I've just been so captivated by this awesome place for community members to connect and have open discussions, especially the fact that the very first item on the agenda is speak out. I think that's so cool. Black lives matter. If poems could march in the streets, overturn verdicts, bring corrupt police to justice, if they could bring a boy back his life and a mother back her son, a father back his boy, return bullets to a gun, unloose the lynch rope and unravel the knots from choked throats, we would not be choking on tears. When do our lives become valuable? In the eyes of the law. When does hate cease to be exonerated behind a badge and lighter skin? And God forbid you wear a hoodie in the rain while having black skin with Skittles in your pocket. You can taste the rainbow, but you can't taste freedom. You can taste your own blood, but you can't taste the rainbow. From 
my vantage point, I'm, I'm sort of working on what I hope will be the sort of the, the interpretive space here in the office. This will remain the main entrance, but the goal is that, that you know, this entryway will be more associated with you know, the mural and the exhibition space. Well, I mean, you know, people can obviously choose to come in there, but realistically, you know, the goal is to make sure that anyone who wants to. I'm Dan Higgins, and I am today introducing a show of photographs, an exhibit of photographs at the Flynn Dog Gallery. You have the Mosquito Region, Bilwe Puerto Cabezas. This is Burlington's sister city right here. I like pictures of people in their workplace. This is a woman, very well-known woman, that, that produces a coconut bread that's very popular. These are the young people who produce public access television in Bilwe, and these guys are, are milking the cow. Uh, they're trying to get some cream, crema, for beans in the morning. This can be a paqua also. It's a blunt arrow, which is made to stun. You want to shoot a squirrel or something like that, or a rabbit, and you want, you, do, you want to punch a hole in the hide, because you just have to sew it up again if you're going to use the hide for anything. So is it like sometimes like loud or just quiet? Uh, it depends on, you know, like, um, depends on the time, you know, especially when there's elections around, um, it's more busy. Uh, I don't know, you've missed the last election, it was a uh, general election where um, uh, the town meetings, um, it gets crazy around the town meetings because everyone's coming here to vote, the early votings and stuff. Uh, this is the CSWD Materials Recovery Facility and it's where all of the recyclable materials from within Chittenden County and about half of Vermont come to be processed, sorted, bailed and ready to ship to market. Here comes the big cookie right now. Look at this cookie. This one's mine. This is the one I get to eat. Three, two, one. Jump those cookies. Into the glass of milk it goes. Into your glass. He assessed her and found that she was most likely choking. Officer Sheravelli then performed the Heimlich maneuver on the female and dislodged a piece of food. She began breathing again and was then assessed by Essex Rescue. Sheravelli's quick response and actions saved this person's life. So on behalf of the Essex Police Department and our community, I want to congratulate you, present you with a life-saving award. My name is Aaron Haji, and today we have a local artist group by the name of A2VT who will be sharing their story with us. The subject of our program today is human trafficking, context, and its effect in Vermont. Que están llegando la comunidad y se están integrando también, verdad? Este ahí esa foto que ven es la asamblea de Addison. Mm -hmm. the, the Good Samaritan law will protect them. They don't have to worry about, oh, you know, I'm going to get in trouble now, so I'm not going to call. I'll take $5,000. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'll take $5,000. So if that's just being going away just to pay off debt that you may or may not be able to pay off anyways. That's part of a leaf bag. Part that, of a leaf yep, bag. So you can use the bag, too. Just got to break, you know, the more you break up all of your materials, the faster it will break down and the quicker you'll get compost. Uh, so hey, we got a caller. Uh, with uh, a, probably a challenge for the chumps here. Okay. Caller, what's your first name? We will be having every month a show where I will bring people in this community doing great work in bringing us together. But the best of all of them is this organization. Channel 17, we cannot thank them for what they do, mm -hmm. bringing us closer and closer together every single day. Thank you. Uh, and let me thank Channel 17 for sponsoring this event, everybody for being here and all of these fellow Vermonters who are up here uh, making their points public. Really appreciate Channel 17 being here. It's important to all of us. Public access TV is about being informed. It's about getting information at the local and state level in a wide variety of views. And I think that that's what we need to make informed decisions. Channel 17 provides a voice for myself and anybody else who has something that they want to say about the community or about the world. And the fact that we have broadcast uh, of government meetings and stuff for people that can't get to all of those government meetings, these are important things that I think in a democracy that we need to have and we need to keep having. Thanks again to Vicki Lampron for sharing her story earlier. And thanks to Representative Lippert for being the last elected official standing on the, on the panel. <laughs>
Thanks, Channel 17. <laughs> Channel 17. <laughs>